that patrol. Hi everybody, welcome to SEC Sports. Tonight we have the boys lacrosse game, North St. Paul Polars taking on the Roseville Raiders. The North St. Paul Polars are 1-0, led by head coach Jake Carter. They'll be in the red and white tonight. They go against the Raiders, who are coached by Seth King. They'll be in the black and silver tonight. Both these teams coming into the season 1-0. It's a beautiful night here. Perfect night for the second game of lacrosse of the season. 12 minutes are on the clock. We're about to get the first quarter underway. Last matchup between these two teams was Roseville absolutely dominated. That was on May 19th of 2017. Roseville won 18 to zero. North St. Paul didn't win a game last year. They were 0-6. And oh, in conference, 0 and 10 overall in the Metro East. And taking a look at the Suburban East, the Roseville Raiders last year were 2 and 6 in conference in the Suburban East, 7 and 6 overall. And both these teams look to have a better year this year. They've started off on the right foot, both teams 1 and 0. And for North St. Paul, uh, last game, Nick Feist had three goals, zero assists in their first game played. So he's got three points on the year the seat for the senior midfielder. Now taking a look at the Roseville Raiders senior attackman. Uh, that is Jake Fast. Jake Fast had four goals, two assists, and six points total in a 16-2 win over Minnehaha Academy a couple days ago. And North St. Paul started the year against Robbinsdale Cooper at home on the 15th, that was Monday, and they won six to three. And as both these teams are in the middle of the field ready to kick this one off for the Polars, or for Roseville, Jake Fast had six points in that first game, Jared Ruskin, had three goals as well, same with Bjorn Anderson. Uh, those guys look to get, get hot here. And as I said before, the weather's looking great tonight. There's the snowman. Even though the great weather is warming up, it's not gonna melt him. 52 degrees out, a little cloudy. Nine degrees, there are nine, nine mile per hour winds heading to the east. So it's a beautiful night, as I said. Temperatures shouldn't cool too, uh, you know, shouldn't go down too much uh, for this game. And the refs are, and the refs are talking to the young men, and they're gonna get ready to go here. Hopefully, we see some sportsmanship. Got some bull beat playing in the background. These teams are getting ready to rumble, as the song says. Both these teams, as I said, both these teams did not have the best of year last year. With North St. Paul going 0 and 10, Roseville 7 and 6. They did have a winning record, but they went 2-6 in that tough Suburban East Conference, which has Stillwater, Eastridge, Barker Cottage Grove, White Bear Lake, and Crete and Durham Hall. Stillwater won the Suburban East Conference last year. There's head coach Seth King for the Roseville Raiders. And as I said before, the North will be in the white and red tonight going against the Roseville Raiders, who are black and silver. Don't know what the holdup is, but Ref's really dragging out this pregame conference. So this game will be getting underway shortly. And as I said, Roseville beat Minnehaha Academy to start the year. And they go to Forest Lake after this. So three straight road games for Roseville to start the year. And for North St. Paul, they have 
five straight home games before they go to Sibley, Simley at the end of the month. Both the goalies are headed towards both of their respective nets. And I think we're about to kick this one off. Looks like we're about to get the initial face off here. That'll be number 11, Nelson, for the face off going against Feist of North High. Both these two get down and ready to duke it out for first possession of the game. And North St. Paul come away with it. That's Feist. He streaks down the far side. Looking to make something happen here to start the game, get North St. Paul off on the right foot. He gets it out, pass goes into the sun, and that'll go out of bounds. It looks like that sun right in that area is, is bad, so Roseville will take over. They'll airmail this one all the way down the field. That's to Nelson. Nelson doesn't get it. North St. Paul picks it up. And there'll be a throw down the field, and. That one will go out of bounds as North St. Paul try to cross past that one. All the way across the field, long pass for North St. Paul. And North St. Paul will take this one back. Get it out to Feist. Feist being guarded by Martell. He's got it over the middle and he'll take his shot. That one's good. Right past the goalie, number 40, Will Peterson. Too much to handle down there. Peterson's not happy, but Feist gets his first goal of the game. Puts Sorry them up the polar, one to nothing. Four, Nate Sullivan. Oh, correction, number four, Nick Feist. Assisted by number eight, Feist eight with four Sullivan. goals on the year now. Starting off his season quarter. right. Four goals, four Feist points for this Sullivan, young man. 11-10 for the Polars. Last game, Feist went five for five in face-off attempts. He won the first one tonight. Let's see if he can go two for two. What? Feist. Still in a battle down there. Ball still loose, still loose. And Roseville's gonna pick this one up. That's number 14, Max Maz. Maz has it on the far side. Throws it over the middle. That's 22, Jared Ruskin. And Ruskin gets the goal. Both the goalies not starting out too hot right now, and Roseville ties it up one to one. So two quick Sorry, goals here within the first minute, seven seconds of the first half, or the Jared first Ruskin. period, excuse me. Unassisted, 10.53 first Unassisted quarter. shot, so once Ruskin. again, we'll get another oh, face well, off after winning all Raiders. five face-offs last time or last game Feist won the first one today and he lost the second one so he's six for seven on his face-off attempts to start the year and Feist muscles that one away and he'll take this one down the field he'll lose possession of it and the ball's still loose still loose Roseville looks playing you know, strong defense, and they'll pick it up. That's number nine, Lescano Stye. Ball's heads down the field, that's three, Jake Fast. Fast with four goals in the last game. He'll throw this one in, he'll try to skip past it, past the goalie, stemming, but that one's no good. Looks like he skipped that one a little too far out in front of the net. Bounced right over. So Stemming, or Stemming, will look to throw this one out. He's gonna run all the way down the field with it. I don't know if I've ever seen a goalie get that far out. And he throws this one right to the Roseville defender and he's out of the net, so he's got a long way to run back. They'll throw this one in and Stemming makes a great play. 
and he recovers that one very well, and then he'll throw it really way far downfield. Roseville picks it up once again, so two terrible passes from Stemmig. That's Wallish, who's got the ball, and now it gets its way. They looked for the pass to go to fast. He was right out in front of the net. That one goes too high and rolls out of bounds. So Stemmig will look to throw this one in after he had two straight terrible passes in the last two possessions. So Stemming gets it, inches it closer to midfield. Throws this one, another bad pass by Stemming, and Roseville ends up with the ball again. That's Ruskin. Ruskin gets it down, and a nice block there by Stemming. Looks like he had a too sure what's going on. We're going to get a penalty here. Let's see who ends up with the ball. I think Roseville is going to keep it. And Roseville put in some substitutions. Two big boys down here for North St. Paul and um, Roseville. Jake Hyland, big boy, in front of the net for Roseville. Throw it behind the net. They eventually get it out to Martin. Martin, no good. Stemmick looking to make another pass. And he finally gets this one downfield, another bad pass, and Roseville ends up with it again. Roseville has numbers, and nothing going there as the ball flies out of bounds. It's big old defenseman Mark Braley, the senior, looking to go get that ball. Two huge players for Roseville and North St. Paul. Looks like they made it out of bounds line here, and Roseville forces a turnover, and they'll get the ball. Looking to attack here quickly. They got it behind the net, that's Anderson. Anderson throws it to, to Fast, and Fast gets his first goal of the night. North St. Paul, two to one in the first three and a half minutes of the game. Jump out to an early lead after being down one nothing to start the game. Fast, four goals and two assists the last game. Gets his first goal of the night, so he's got five goals on the year to go along with two assists, seven points total. And we'll get another face off here. Here comes the face off, and these two duke at it. And ball still loose. Eventually he's picked up by North St. Paul. That's Feist. Feist takes it to the far side of the field in their offensive zone. Now he centers it out. Gets this one out to Peterson. Peterson looks for the shot. That one's no good. Nice block by goalie Peterson right there. So Peterson blocked by Peterson. And it looks like North St. Paul's gonna retain possession. Look to attack again. Ball starts out with Simonis. Nothing going on there, so Roseville will take over the ball. We're gonna get some substitutions. Feist comes out of the game for North St. Paul as Roseville looks to get some momentum going towards the offensive side of the ball. Anderson. Out to Martin on the near side. Get it back out to Anderson. Out to Morgan on the far side now. Looking to make a move. He comes towards the near side of the field. Gets this one back out to Anderson on the far side. Back out to Morgan. Morgan. Going to set up a little pick play there. Morgan picks it up. Gets it out to Anderson. Anderson can't handle that possession, but it'll be 
that pass will be picked up by 14. It's Max Moss. Now Anderson's got it. Gets it down to Martin. Martin goes behind the net to Fast. Fast. Sheds, sheds the defender, looks to throw this one in, and that one's no good. I don't know if that one would have been in if it was blocked, regardless. But it ends up in the net of Stemmig. Stemmig looking for somebody to move, and he runs down the field. Takes it out to midfield. And once again, he throws it to a Roseville defender. Ball's loose. And these guys are getting a little rough down there. Goalie Peterson coming out to play. Luckily, his guys got on the ball. Now Maz has it. Gets it out to Morgan. Morgan. Over to Martin. Martin gets it to the middle of the field. And they'll shoot it, and that's blocked. Ball's loose in front of the net. So once again, a nice block there from Stemmig. Ends up with North St. Paul ball. They'll have it on the near side corner here. In their defensive zone. <laughs> so Stemmig, a lot of cardio for this young man tonight. He keeps running the ball out. Way down the field. Nobody open. He makes this nifty little move. He'll just bomb this one down the field. Ends up in a Rose, oh, near Roseville. Uh, ball's loose, but it's picked up by Peterson. Peterson, looks like we're gonna have an injured player down here, and that's North St. Paul. Not too sure what happened, but immediately dropped the stick there. The trainer will go out to attend the injured player. So it's two to one, Roseville over North St. Paul. 521 left to go in the first period. Hopefully this young man's all right. Hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him. Players all take a knee. Hope the injured player is, is okay. See the players there taking a knee. So we have one goal for Roseville from Jake Fast and another from Jared Ruskin. Fast the senior, Ruskin the junior. And then the only goal for North St. Paul here tonight is by the senior midfielder. Nick Feist, who's the leading scorer on the team so far, through one game and seven minutes of another one. So looks like that's number 12, Tristan Yang, who was injured. Uh, he's down on the field. Good for him getting back up, and, and it looks like he'll be okay. So nice camera work, getting a shot right there. So we'll start this battle on back up with 5.21 left to play in the first period. It started off fast, two goals in the first minute of the game. Only one goal since in the last six minutes. So that'll be Solorio Soberanis coming in. Senior midfielder. He'll replace Yang. And that's Feist coming back in. Hey, you, Carter, Jake Fast. Let's switch right now so we exchange. You guys are on your so we're gonna get a penalty here. Not too sure what it is. It looks like the ref's going out talking to the North St. Paul coach, Carter. Looks like there might have been an illegal substitution there. Delay of game. Excuse me, I was corrected. Hey, right away. So Rose will start with the ball after the injury. Island, stay right there. Right the Island, up side the middle, and they up get the it middle, to Anderson. Right Anderson loves that spot behind the net. Looking to make a move. Being guarded heavily hey, hey. right behind the Bjorn, net. Bjorn, Bjorn, we're up top. 31. Bjorn, up top. He's getting up smacked top. down there. Getting a little push around. Nice defense there by North St. Paul, forcing Roseville to get it back out up top of the offensive side of the zone. And that's Maz, Maz being guarded heavily, gets it out to the other Maz. And we got a loose ball, and Roseville's, or North St. Paul's gonna come up with it, and there's a trip. 
And now Martin ends up with it. And then he gets it out to Moz. Got another penalty here. And they'll get a shot. That one's too high. Brett Favre like fastball there. No good. You definitely don't want that ball hitting you. Looks like we got a foul on North St. Paul, so the ball will stay with Roseville. Yeah, and I think we got a timeout here by Roseville. So these teams will go and regroup. Roseville takes time Last out. minute of the ball game is taking a lot. We got a timeout and an injury. There's Coach Carter. Not the Samuel L. Jackson Carter from the movie, but uh, Coach Carter for North St. Paul. He's talking to his young men, and then there's Seth King continuing to encourage, encourage his players. They got the two to one lead here to start the game. Both these teams, one and oh, to start the year. Both in opposite divisions, one in Metro East and the other in the Suburban East. Roseville's in the Suburban East. Too much going on here. So far, slow game. Got to hope these two teams will want to start the year out a lot better than they started last year, especially Ro or especially North St. Paul, not winning one game last year. And as I said two years ago, this North St. Paul team was dominated by the Raiders of Roseville, 18 to nothing. So uh, let's see if uh, Coach Carter can get this North uh, North Polar's team on track. Damian Johnson's done it with the basketball team. And uh, they got the new football coach who's looking to turn around the program as well. Um, they didn't do too well last year, but you got to start somewhere. And these teams look to improve. So both teams will retake the field. There's referee there, looking ready to start this one back once these young men hustle to the spots where they need to be. And Roseville will start back with the ball after the last penalty and the timeout. That's Martin, Martin gets it out. Now it's up top, it's centered for Anderson. Anderson passes it, shot, no good. That's Max Maz skipping it out too far in front, skips just past the net. Not just past, just a little out. So the Polars will look to get this one out. That's Stemmig. Stemmig out of the net. Ready to you know, get his guys going. What we've seen from Stemmig is, you know, hopes and prayers, chuck it downfield, nobody getting open, tough defense from the Raiders so far. And there's the chuck downfield, and Roseville's going to end up with it. That's Anderson cruising down the middle of the field. And he'll whip it out. Nice slick pass, and they'll throw it. Fastball no good from Martin. So they had the moves down there, no good. But Roseville will retain possession. They have it behind the net now. Uh, no good from the big man, Highland. But the no Roseville regains possession. Now they got it right in front of the net. Nice block there by Stemmick. Martin, you got to think if you would have just skipped that one down low, he would have had the easy, easy score. Nonetheless, another good block by Stemmick. That one shot by Fast. And Stemmick will look to switch sides of the field. Well, once again, it ends up in the hands of the Roseville Raiders, or in the net. And we're going to get another penalty here. Looks like a little check in the back. So the ball will stay with the Raiders. Lots of whistles here tonight so far in the last couple of minutes. So Stemming will get called for the penalty. Not happy about it. Shaking his head down there. And I don't think Coach Carter was either, but... They're down there talking, giving a little pat on the back. And Roseville will take possession. That's Will Moss. Gotta believe him and Max are twins, both midfielders. So Moss will take this one out. Gets it out to the near side and they get it out behind the net. That's Anderson. Anderson. Back out to Martin. Now it's over the middle. That's Big Man Highland, and he just throws it down at the bottom of the net, and Roseville goes up three to one. Highland 
Looks like he's about six foot five, six foot six, 250 plus pounds. Big target there. He just stands there and tosses it right in to the bottom of the net. He gets the goal, giving Roseville the two nothing or the three to one lead. Yeah, and there you see a nice pass dish in there, and Highland throws it towards the bottom of the net. Stemic, really nothing he could do there. Highland had one goal last game. And he gets another goal this game. Now these two will set to face it off. Feist is back in for the Polars. And Roseville looks again. And looked like Feist had it. Ball's still loose, and eventually Feist picks it up. Streaks down the middle of the field, getting contested heavily in the mid. And he loses it. Roseville picks it up. That's Wallish. Wallace takes it on the near side, looking to get something going, smacked out of his hands by Peterson. Peterson gets checked. And it looks like we're gonna get another penalty here. It'll be polar ball. So we're gonna have some substitutions. And the polars take over. Nope, not yet. So once again, the pass out, the Polar's struggling to get anything going on the offensive ball. Once they try to get it out of their defensive side of the zone, they really can't move it past. So that's Morgan. Morgan gets that out towards the near side to Ruskin, who's got one goal in the night. Excuse me, that wasn't Ruskin. Martin, Martin. Now he gets it to Ruskin up top. Ruskin looked like he hesitated to shoot there. Now he looks to shoot this one low, and that one's good. Ruskin gets his second goal of the night, and Roseville goes up four to one, scoring twice within the last minute. So Roseville creating a little bit of separation with two minutes left in the first period. Ruskin had three goals in the last game, zero assists. So he's got five goals on the year now. Ruskin starting off the year right. And as I said, North St. Paul just getting out hustled here early. No offensive movement with the ball. Roseville playing great defense. Now Feist to look to win this face off, get his team some momentum. Looks like a little bit of a false start there. That wasn't Ruskin, excuse me, that's Sullivan. So he gets it out. They get it out to Nelson. Nelson has it at the top near the far side. He'll take this one himself, looking to make a move. And he'll throw this one out to Fast. It's out to Highland. Highland with a nice pass over the middle, and they'll throw it in. Nice assist from Highland to number 21, Carver Martin. The senior attackman gets his first goal of the game. And Roseville scores three goals within the last minute and a half to take a five to one lead with 142 left in the first. Martin from Highland, 142 for the Raiders. Highland with a nice assist there. As you can see, Highland just finds the open man, gets it out to Martin, Martin just throws that one low. Eventually, you know, Stemig, is, he's gotta have a little better help from his defense out in front of him, wide open man. Nothing he could do, and we're gonna get another penalty. Penalties galore right now, I feel like I'm watching the NFL. So it looks like that one will be on the Polars and the Raiders will take over. Looks like that was on number 21, Wesley Mandler. Just a freshman. So Roseville will take this one over. Morgan will start out with it up top, up top towards midfield. Roseville, five unanswered goals since the first 
20 seconds of the game. Down to Martin. Over to Anderson. Anderson behind the net, looking to make a move. He'll bring it out to the far side. Out to Nelson. Nelson passes it to the far side near the net, or the near side near the net. Morgan's got it. He threw it out. Another nice passing there. Great block by Stemig. Jake Fast put some heat on that one for Roseville. Unfortunately for him, even better block. So Anderson will bring it now. He's got it at the top. Gets it up to Fast. Back over to Anderson, and they throw it. Another block by Stemmig after a shot by Martin. And Stemmig will get this one out of their defensive side of the zone, looking to change the field a little bit. And North St. Paul looks like they had it, and they almost picked it up. Ball still loose. Finally picked up by Wallish of Roseville. Rolish. Wallace, pass it out to Peterson. We're gonna get a penalty way away from this one. It looks like it's gonna be on Roseville and North St. Paul will take over. I don't know if I've ever seen so many penalties called in lacrosse game. So North St. Paul will have it on the far side of the field in their offensive zone. And it's number 15, Lucas Wilson, senior defender coming in for the Raiders. Pass it out to the far side near the net. And they're pushing it back out. And the pass goes wide of Soberanis. So once again, the Polars can't capitalize on offense. That's Nelson will start it out where Roseville comes out hustling. Looking to make something happen here to go up six to one. Nice pass off towards the middle and that one's blocked. By the, def or by the midfielder Sullivan. And now North St. Paul pick it up, ball gets smacked away. And that is the end of the first period. At the end of the first, the of the first score, period, the Raiders, the away team at North St. Paul High School against the Polars are down five to one. And we'll have a two minute break here between, uh, between periods. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. Eleven million people in the United States have macular degeneration. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. All right, these two teams are ready to get underway for the second quarter. Roseville leading five to one. They got five goals, one from Jake Fast, one from Carver Martin, two from Jared Ruskin, and one from big man Jake Hyland. And the only goal for North St. Paul tonight comes from Nick Feist, the leading scorer on the team so far. And both these teams will switch sides of the field. And the second quarter will be underway. And the ref drops the ball. These two will duke it out. And Feist picks it up. Looking to make something happen. Ball getting smacked away, which causes him to turn over the ball. And we got a penalty down on the field, just like the first half of the first quarter. Starts off with the penalty once again. Lots of laundry in the first quarter, and the second quarter starts the same. So Feist will come in. Looks like he's gimping a little bit. A little problem with his leg here. 
not good for North St. Paul and your best players not 100%. It's 11.48 left to go, 12 seconds in, and we already got a penalty. Now Roseville will be on defense. North St. Paul will take this one. Feist has it up top now. Looking to make something happen. He scored the first goal of the game, and then the first 30 seconds of nothing since, and he fires it in, and Peterson goes right to his chest, and Peterson barely had to move the stick. So Roseville moves it out. They already have it on in their offensive side of the zone. That's Ruskin now. Ruskin looking to make a move. Gets absolutely decked. And there will be some more laundry. Looked pretty clean to me. I, I love to see some action, though. But Roseville will keep possession after that penalty. And it did look like Braley had to tell Vu to calm down just a little bit. Vu coming out, laying some big hits right there. I don't know where. Looked pretty clean of a hit. Not too sure what happened here. And Vu will come out, go back in. Looks like that penalty was actually on Jones. So two men in the penalty box right now for North St. Paul. One man, that's Martell for Roseville. So it looks like Roseville have a one man advantage here. And Fast will start off with the ball for Roseville on the far side. He gets it out, now the ball's behind the net. That's Martell, no, oh, excuse me, that's Anderson. Anderson gets pushed down by Braley and we got another penalty here. And Anderson misses the shot. Now he got another penalty. We are 54 seconds in to the second period. There's already three penalties within the first before the, the one minute clock is you know even struck. So it looks like Braley will be coming out after the hit. I would not want to be hit by that young man. I guarantee you he plays some football that this uh, last fall. <laughs> it looks like North St. Paul has a lot of men in that penalty box right now. As if they weren't uh, already losing. Some of the fans are not too happy with how the referees are calling the game so far. Not letting these kids play. I'd have to say, I'm not gonna disagree. Now Roseville gets it back on. They have it behind the net. That's Anderson who puts it over towards the middle on a shot on goal. And that one falls in. Fast gets his second goal of the game. Stemig, nothing, he, <laughs> looked like he didn't know so where the ball was. Get the, the replay eventually the here. 10 second Six to one now, the Best Raiders are up over, or over North St. Paul. 10.57 left to go in the second period. So it's starting to turn into a blowout for North St. Paul, you gotta think they were used to those after going 0-10 last year, trying to change the culture of this program. I already have with one win this year after not winning one last year. Some fans still yelling at the ref, and these two will look to face off. Here's the face off, and Roseville's got it. That's Moz. Moz passed it out. Far side, they're going to get another shot on goal here. That's Highland. Highland doesn't get it to go. This one goes out of bounds. Looks like a ball will stay with Roseville. That's Martin. Martin with one goal on the night. Martin 
gets it over to Fast. Fast looking for the assist, throws it too high, but another Roseville player comes up with it, and Nelson can't come down. Can't come away with that goal. Fast has it now. Too high for Nelson, who can't corral it. Looks to pick this one up. Or that's Morgan, excuse me. Now Fast has it once again, and a nice steal there by the goalie, Stemmig, and he forces this one back out. And that's 32, Simonis. Simonis trying to be nifty on his feet. And this ball stolen away. Looks like we might have another penalty here. Roseville continues to maintain offensive possession. North St. Paul can't get anything on offense. I don't know how long they've had the, the ball on their offensive side of the zone, but it hasn't been very long at all within the first 15 minutes of the game. Now Fast has it behind the net, looking to make something happen, stumbles on, over his own feet. Looking to make a move. Nothing going, he gets it out to Morgan up top. That's over to Maz. Maz out to Morgan on the far side. Brings it up towards the middle. And we got another penalty. Not too sure what's going on down there. I didn't know this was called Penalty High School. Nonetheless, play resumes. Nelson has it now, looking to make something happen. Nobody really moving, so he takes it out to the far side. Looking, Morgan looking to set the pick, doesn't really get it. Now they pass it to Fast right behind the net. He gets it out to a player up top, and that pass is no good. Shot no good from Max Moss. He wouldn't have gone in even if the goalie didn't touch it. So we'll get some substitutions here for Roseville. Will Moss comes in as well as does Bjorn Anderson. Jesse Nelson coming out. And so is Carter Morgan. So we got another penalty here as the ref talks to head coach Jake Carter in North St. Paul. Looks like they're in Yankee number 32, Simonis. Six to one, 840 left to go in the second half, or in the second period, excuse me. So Roseville's got it now. They get it out to Maz. Over to Anderson. Fast, and they'll get a shot here from Moz, which rings off the net, right off the post, and that one flied right back. Roseville's got it, looking to make something happen. Shot no good from Will Moz. They'll get it back out up top. That's Max Moz. Gets it out to Fast, Fast. Looking for something, he gets it back out to Moz. Over to Fast. Back to Moss. Over to Anderson. Anderson, back to Moss. And that's Fast, and he rifles one. Nice block by Stemmig, and they'll shoot it once again. Ball rings off both posts, top and bottom. No good. So lucky break there for North St. Paul as they look to get the ball on their offensive side of the zone. And they can't even pick up the ball right now. And Roseville's going to get possession back of this one. It looks like that's Jonathan Jones, who had trouble for North St. Paul picking that ball up. Will Moss has it now. He gets it out to Martin. Martin, ball's loose. Fast will come pick it up. And that one's not out of bounds just yet. So Fast has it on the near side. Gets it out to Moss. Now it's on the far side of the field to the other Maz. Maz looking to make something happen. 
get to fast behind the net. Fast looks to get the nice assist up front, but it, it's not able to be corralled. And North St. Paul pick it up and then lose it once again. That's Anderson comes away with it. He rifles it in the net and it bounces off Stevick's leg and it goes in. That's number 24, Bjorn Anderson with the goal. Scoring for Roseville, number 24, Bjorn Anderson. Anderson with his first goal Unassisted. on the night. Roseville scored seven quarter. straight goals after North St. Paul started out with the first goal of the night. We'll take a look at this one. Anderson just rifles it in there, Stemmig. I don't know if he got you know a good line of sight on that ball. Nonetheless, it goes right past him. That's the second goal we've seen just kind of eke in there in the past three. So Anderson. Had three goals the last game, so he's got four goals on the year. And these two teams will face off. And it looks like Roseville might come away with it. We're gonna get a penalty here. It looks like it's gonna be North St. Paul ball. That's Feist. Gets it up to the far side. Player loses possession of it. Roseville looks like they might have it. Ball still loose. Still loose. And it's picked up by Peterson. And the ball's loose. And Ro or North St. Paul having a tough time doing anything on offense. Roseville's got it now. Picked up by Lescano Stai. He's going to throw this one near the net. They got numbers, and that's fast. He throws this one in the bottom of the net, and that one's good. Roseville, eight straight goals. And they're up eight to one with 5.57 left to go in the second quarter, folks. This one's turning into a long night for the Polars as goalie Stemig hits his, his, uh, his stick on the net there in frustration. So we'll get another face off here. <laughs> Looks like this one's gonna go to North St. Paul after all the scrum is over. That's Feist. No, excuse me, that's Jones. Nope, that, that is Feist. And once again, North St. Paul not able to pass the ball on offense. And Roseville's got it. And they look to push it. To flip the field here, and that's Wallish. Wallish has a little spin move, and he splits two defenders. And he almost shoots it on the net, almost made a heck of a play if he would have scored on that one. Ball goes out of bounds, it's North St. Paul ball. Say Paul on offense once again. It looks like that frustration eked out right there, and there's going to be another penalty. Not a good one. Looks like that was on number 20, Ben Peterson. He'll come out of the game. 
Just gave a little smack to Morgan there on the back. So Roseville had the ball. Morgan will have it on the far side. He'll push it out to Moss. Back out to Morgan. Morgan gets it over the middle, and they pass it back out up top. That's fast. He gets it over the middle. Unable to corral it is Anderson. Still going. He's got the ball now. And he flips it up in the air. And this one's going to go out of bounds. It looks like North St. Paul's going to have the ball. So Stemming will throw it out to the other side of the field. Roseville pick it up. And once again, they're going to have possession. Moz has it now. Easily passes the defender right there. Gets it over to his brother. Bjorn Anderson has it now. Now it's back out to Moz. Ball's loose, North St. Paul picks it up and then loses it. Ball goes back to Roseville. Moss to Moss. Now it's out to Anderson. Anderson throws it in the bottom of the net and he gets his second goal of the night. So two goals from Fast, two goals from Ruskin, two goals from Anderson, three players with at least two goals tonight. And North St. Er, North St. Paul goes down nine to one. Roseville scored nine straight goals after going down one nothing to start the game. 319 left to go here in the second quarter. It's turning into a long night for the Polars of North St. Paul. Hopefully they can turn it around here. Make this one interesting. Really seems they need to get Feist the ball back, but as you saw, he was limping earlier. Haven't really seen too much from him since. He's on the sideline now. And Roseville come away with it after the faceoff. That's Martell. Martell passes it out. And this one's going to roll out of bounds way too far. This ball's going to roll all the way out of bounds. And North St. Paul take this one over. You have to, to Semig. Semig probably just bomb this one down the field. He'll, he'll take it himself. Looks like he's going to. You know, he's like, you guys aren't scoring, so I'm going to do it. And he chucks this one right on the ground. We got an offsides penalty here. And Semming has no idea what he did wrong, but uh, neither do I. So Semig will go back into his net after that great hustle all the way down the field. Got to like to see that. Still still pretty heated about it down there. This young man uh, giving it his all tonight. So Roseville started with now on midfield, and they'll take it. That's Moz. Moz over to Nelson. Nelson gets it over to Fast. Gets it on the far side there. Over to Highland. No good. North St. Paul once again just can't do anything with the ball in their, uh, in their sticks today. And once again, we're going to get another shot. That one was from Nelson. No idea what that was. Fast will take it now. He brings it out to the near side. Back out to Nelson. Nelson gets it to the middle. And there'll be a shot. 
and that one goes off Stemmick's chest. Another shot here, and that one's good. Beautiful shot there by number 21, Carver Martin, who joins the two-goal club tonight. Roseville goes up 10-1, to 157 left to go in the second quarter, and this one's turning into a blowout, folks. Looks like they're going to give their guys a little bit of a breather, putting some backups in. That's freshman Lincoln Peterson, number seven, coming into the game for the Raiders of Roseville. Ball comes in, faceoff is about to start. Nine goal lead here for Roseville. Folks, they were down one to nothing and it looked like North St. Paul was gonna come out hot in this game. And they've done nothing since on offense. I don't even know if they've had possession for longer than 20 seconds. So let's see if they could get the face off here. Make this one a little, score a couple goals before the half, and then there's a little, another penalty here. It looked like they just tripped up over each other. Nobody was pushed, don't know what else you can do as a defender either way there, but. The same, uh, same guy yelling at the referee out there. So Feist in the game, still gimping just a little bit. Got, got to wonder what's ailing this young man. Scored that first goal of the game. Kind of gimping ever since, and really he seems to be the only player who can handle the ball for North St. Paul. As we've seen in Minnesota, the sport of lacrosse is really starting to grow, uh, but it's still not at the level of a lot of East Coast teams. But there are a lot of good players that come out of Minnesota, but a lot of these programs are still just starting out. So ball's loose, Feist comes up with it. Nice defense there from Lesgano Stye. And we're gonna get a sweeping shot here from Feist. Blocked immediately and swarming defense by Roseville. And I'm not gonna lie to you, Roseville just looks like they want it more. Feist taking out his uh, frustration right there. Could have got called for a penalty. And now we have big old number 40 goalie Peterson running down the field. And he gets this one out to Ruskin. One minute left to go in this dreaded first half for the Polars and the opposite for the Raiders. Raiders high school's not too far from here. Shots no good. And we're going to get another penalty here. And looks like this one's going to go on Vu. And Vu pretty amped up out there. And he doesn't care if he gets called for the penalty. Nonetheless, he's talking some smack when his team's down nine to one. And we're gonna get another penalty here. And we're gonna get another penalty. There's flags everywhere, folks. Just like the whole first half. The ref's not happy out here. They're gonna take none of the guff from the players. Vu will probably get called for a technical here. And I think the same will be called on number 22, Ruskin. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. A lot of frustrated people down on the field for North St. Paul, and you got to imagine that Ruskin just said to Vu, "Hey, look at the scoreboard," and that was about that was probably the end of discussion. Don't really understand ever taunting a player when you're down by nine, but you know it's high school. So the refs will get everything squared away. We have 42 seconds left in the second quarter. We get a sport, some unsportsmanlike conducts on Ruskin. And he'll go to the penalty box. I don't know if he got kicked out of the game, but he's taking all of his stuff off here. Might be the end of it for Ruskin on the night. Not too sure. So Roseville to have the ball on the near side. 
42 seconds left to go. Refs picking up their flags. One ref picking up both flags. Gentleman gives it to the other ref. And here we go. That's Maz, Will Maz. And passes too much for Fast, who would have been perfect position to score. And this one goes to Sullivan. Sullivan streaking down the, the near side. And if he, if he just kept going, he probably could have gotten the offensive side of the zone. And now he's just backpedaling, backpedaling. And once again, just terrible passing from this Door St. Paul team. And Roseville started off with it again. You gotta wonder, this, this North St. Paul team struggling with the basic fundamentals of the game tonight. And there's another shot. That one's no good for Maz. As you talked about, you know, the, the quality of play here in Minnesota, there's some great lacrosse teams, and then there's some programs that are just starting out yeah, trying to gain their footing in the lacrosse world, folks. And that'll be halftime. Well, the Roseville Raiders are up 10 to 1 at North St. Paul High School over the Polars. And that'll be halftime. Let's see if Coach uh, Seth King or the Raiders can you know, get some backups in and Coach Carter for North St. Paul. You know, you gotta wonder what he's saying to his team right now. He doesn't look too enthused. Um, but we'll see you after the break. You how to team proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! you now and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Do you know what constitutes our constitution? This living document that's a fusion of our forefathers' vision for the future of this nation? We have a bill of rights. We're not billed for these rights, but we've been given these rights because we live. We don't have to pay every day when we don't watch what we say. A penny for our thoughts is not what we give, but we give off our thoughts by the way that we live. And there are soldiers who've died, men and women who've paid the price, in the blink of an eye given their lives to make our lives nice. And we can't fight to preserve these rights, to reach new heights, get through the darkest nights together if we don't know. We the people, we the future, can't make it right if we don't show an interest in learning the script that governs our lives. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but if you belong to this country, then there are rights that belong to you so long as you do one thing. You know your constitution and your freedom that it brings. You can't fight for what's right. You can't find a flaw if you've never shed light on the supreme law of the land. The land of the free and the home of the brave requires your knowledge and God's good grace in order to save our human race in the face of terror. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you need to choose what you're going to do because you could lose everything.
Welcome back, everybody. We're in halftime right now. 6.30 left to go in halftime. And the Polars are down 10 to 1 here on April 18th of 2019 to the Raiders of Roseville. The Raiders of Roseville starting out down one to nothing and have been scoring all the goals ever since. It's been the, the Raiders show. Not the, not the best first half for penalty wise. Both these teams called for more penalties I think I've ever seen in a lacrosse game. And let's check out the North St. Paul boys schedule here for the upcoming games. They got Sibley on the 22nd and then they go on to face a very good Matamidi team who are also in their section for the Metro East. Matamidi 6-0 in conference last year, 10-3 overall. They did lose a couple of seniors, but that Matamidi program always fantastic. And then they face Hastings, the third place team and from last year, and St. Thomas Academy back-to-back -back games. So it'll be quite the tough schedule for North boys here. Maybe they can pick up a W over Southwest Christian, but they already have one more win than last year. They're 1-0, and, and last year they were 0-10. So we'll see if they can get back on track here. Let's take a look at the Roseville schedule here. They go on to take Forest Lake on the 23rd after this, and then they go on to take take on Woodbury, who were 3-8 and eight overall last year. Forest Lake was 0-8, and 2-11 last year, and they go on to face Creighton. So this Roseville team, last year they finished 2-6 and six in conference, 7-6 and six overall, definitely facing some opponents that they can beat until they get to the latter half of their schedule where they face good teams such as Stillwater Park and East Ridge to end the year, and then they round the year out with a game against Breck on the 23rd. So these two teams do have some some uh, some winnable games that they can, might have coming up, but uh, we'll see what happens. So far, North St. Paul, the way they've played here tonight, I don't know if they, you know, they got to play their hardest in every single game just to try to be in it. They did win their first game of the year uh, as I said, they took that one against Robbinsdale Cooper on the 15th of April. That was Monday night. They won 6-3. to three. And Roseville won their first game of the season. That was against Minnehaha Academy in a blowout 16-2. to two. That one coming on Tuesday. So, folks, we want to remind you, you can always volunteer here at SEC, do some nice little dances down there. There's Brian getting his groove on. If you want to volunteer, you can call the number listed on the screen. That's Arlen Becker's number. Or you can email him at arlen at scctv.org. You know, you can always come out. We're always looking for volunteers here at SEC TV. You know, there's free food involved. You get hands-on experience, whether it be camera work or inside the truck. These guys do a fantastic job here, and uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without our volunteers here at SEC TV. Some great shots of our, our camera people. Whether you're a student looking to just volunteer, or I mean, we're even looking for broadcasters. We've had some people leave us uh, over the last couple months, but uh, not too many games left here to wrap up the sports season for SEC TV. Um, but, you know, excited to get back calling football for you guys. Hopefully this North St. Paul program next year will be a little better. And this Rose, the Roseville Raiders, you know, they've really turned around that football program over the last few years. Uh, so, you know, college or high school football is always the best. And let's take a look at the weather. The weather's only dropped one degree since game time. It's down to 52 now, partly cloudy. Beautiful shot of the moon. Nine degrees wind, miles per hour. Nine mile per hour winds, excuse me. Going to the east, not having any sort of effect. Beautiful night for lacrosse for the second game of the year. Had some bad weather last night. Luckily, the weather was supposed to rain a little bit today. It didn't rain too much, and you know, it's beautiful conditions down here, but you still don't want to get a hit with that ball in this chilly weather because it's going to hurt. And there's the head coaches down there for these two teams Jake Carter of North St. Paul and Seth King of Roseville coming down and chatting this one out during halftime. Both two young men uh, who are leading their teams. A lot of high school teams nowadays are coached by younger, uh, younger former lacrosse players looking to get their start in the coaching industry. There's two right there, and if you're the North St. Paul coach, you know, uh, Seth King, he's probably apologizing to Coach Carter for laying the whooping down in the first half. And, uh, 
And uh, in that first half, folks, there was probably more laundry on the field than I could ever, I think I've ever seen in lacrosse games. I've been calling lacrosse for three years for SEC sports. It's my third year, started my third year. And there were so many penalties that <laughs> a lot of the fans here in North St. Paul were getting quite frustrated. Uh, but the refs are just doing their job uh, calling penalties. These teams need to be more disciplined in how they play if they don't want the game to stop so much. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't think it would change the outcome of the score. Ten to one here. One team's clearly better than the other. And this could turn into an absolute route here. Hey, and that's me on camera. <laughs> Oh, there, there we go, if I can get my directions right. I don't know who's shooting me right now. Oh, there we go, hey. Yeah, so hopefully you guys are enjoying this game. Not the game we thought it was gonna be, but you know, Roseville outscoring their opponents so far this year, 26 to three. North St. Paul scoring one goal at the start of the game. As I said, it came within, there's the first 20 seconds of the game, and it's been all Roseville ever since. So North St. Paul, um, you know, they beat they beat Minnehaha Academy 6-3 on Monday, um, scoring only six goals. But it looks like this Roseville team can score. And they have lots of guys who could do it. Jake Fast, senior, two goals. Carver Martin, two goals. Jared Ruskin, two goals. Bjorn Anderson, two goals. Bjorn Anderson, just a sophomore. Ruskin, junior. Martin, a senior. And Jake Fast, a senior. And also big man Jake Hyland with one goal and one assist. The attackman, senior, big boy, kind of just clogs up the middle. He can catch passes, and uh, they use him effectively. I think they should pass him the ball just a little bit more. I think he could get some easy shots down there. Uh, but nonetheless, this team can attack, and they play swarming defense, too. They're really aggressive uh, for what we've seen in that first half. North St. Paul couldn't get anything going, whether they had possession of the ball. It didn't matter what side of the field they were on, offensive zone, defensive zone. They couldn't get it out. They couldn't even make a simple pass. That's how great the defense was. And that's also just how sloppy they were. It's a little combination of both. Um, but hopefully North St. Paul could turn this one around, make it a little bit of a game. Uh, I'm sure Coach Jake Carter is doing all he can to get these guys better each and every single day. So I'm sure the young man will turn this program around. Lots of great athletes here in the North St. Paul area. Great, great basketball players, and you know they have a uh, they have a, a lot of athletic players for football. But that program's got a new head coach as of last year, and they still looking to turn that program around, establish uh, what's going on. I'm sure Coach Carter for North St. Paul uh, lacrosse team is trying to do that right now. So we're going to get the second half underway. 12 minutes on the clock. Refs about to drop the ball. Here we go. And Feist doesn't come away with it. And that's going to be Martell of Roseville. Roseville already starting off with possession. And Highland just completely biffs that ball, and it's going to go out of bounds. North St. Paul's going to have it. 11.45 left to go. Running score does go at up 12 goals. So if Roseville scores three goals, and North St. Paul scores zero, there will be a running clock here. Full moon out tonight. Got to think that's why North St. Paul thinks that they're losing. Maybe they think it's just a little, a little bit of bad juju at home. If you believe in that sort of thing. So North St. Paul's going to have possession. Stemig. He's going to pass this one out. Had a great play earlier where he ran all the way down the field and shot the ball in the net. Not very great, but nonetheless, he had some great hustle, and I really thought he was going to do that. But he's called for an offsides penalty. And two Polar's players collide, and it looks like one's got the wind knocked out of him, and Roseville's going to have the numbers going the other way. Four on three here, and we're going to get a shot on net. Nice block by Stemig. Looks like that was shot by number 15, Lucas Wilson, the senior defender. And we got a player down on the ground. I don't know if he he collided with another player. It looked like it was either ribs or he got the wind knocked out of him. I'm going to guess it's the wind knocked out of him because you're not going to roll on that side of your ribs. Nonetheless, the trainer and the head coach is going to go out there to check him out. 
Hopefully he's okay. Not too sure who that player is just yet. We'll look to get that for you as soon as we can. But it's 10 to one here. We're a minute five seconds into the second half at North St. Paul High School. Sun is almost completely disappeared. It's way off in the, in the background, just waiting to almost go down. Just, just barely peeking out, the moon's full. The werewolves have come out. A lot of stoppages in this game so far. Player's okay. Looks like he's gonna walk to, off the field on his own uh, on his own will. Mm, that's uh, number twenty. It's number twenty. That's Peterson, the senior midfielder. So he's okay. He's gonna come off the field. And North St. Paul is going to have this one blocked by Highland. And North St. Paul just shoots it out. Now it's picked up by Martell. Martell gets it out to the, the middle of the offensive zone. And now he's got it out to Maz. Both the twin Maz are seniors, Will and Max. Now this one goes out to Will. Over to Max. Max got it up top. Looks like he's telling his brother where to go. Looks like they have some communication down here. I'm sure these two have been playing with each other for a long time, probably since they were born. Highland unable to come up with another pass. And it looks like we're getting the ball saved here. Highland's going to hustle up, and he's going to grab it, and he's going to throw it out. And they're going to shoot it on goal, and that one's good from Bjorn Anderson. He's going to get his third goal of the night. The sophomore putting on a show as Roseville goes up 11 to 1. Sorry for Roseville, number 24, Bjorn Anderson, unassisted. 10 minutes, third quarter. Anderson, Anderson with three goals on minutes, the night. Here's the pass from Highland, and it gets to Anderson. Nifty move. And Stemmick had no answer for it as Anderson scores his third goal. Anderson, three goals in the last game, no assists. So he's got six points on the year, averaging three goals per game so far. And we're only in the third quarter of this one. So we're going to face off here. Here we go. And... Uh, North St. Paul almost comes away with it. Ball sticks smacked out of the hands of Feist. And it's going to be Roseville ball. Oh, excuse me, that wasn't Feist. Yes, it was. Feist comes off the field. And so does, so does Martell. And Roseville once again has it near the, near the goal. Let's see if they can come away with it. Ball's still loose, and they will come away with it. That's Maz. Maz, he's out to Morgan, over to Nelson. Nelson makes a move, gets smacked by Boo. No, that's not Boo, excuse me, that's Braley. Over to Maz, Maz makes a move. Nice block there by Stemmick. Once again, picked up by Roseville. Roseville's gonna have another shot at this one. Nice pass. Ball's loose, we're gonna get a penalty here from North St. Paul. Ball's gonna stay on Roseville, with Roseville. Folks, like I said before, 12 goals is running clock, and that's a very real possibility right now. So look at we gotta Penalty a hit to the back of the head here. And looks like that was on Wesley Mandler, the freshman.
Now Morgan's going to have it up top. Looks like he's going to make something happen here. Martin missed the shot. Looks like if he would have pump faked, he had the goalie deked and instead uh, goes right off the goalie. So Hyland will pick this one up, looking to pass it in. Hyland can make some good passes. Big man. Throws it out to Nelson. Nelson over to Morgan. Morgan. Gets it out to Nelson. Nelson over to Fast. Fast. Looks like he's going to look to shoot this one. He passes it over the middle, and that goal's good. Morgan gets his first goal of the night. The sophomore adds in on the action. And folks, it's an 11 goal lead, 824 left to go in the third period. We have a whole other period after this one, folks. It's going to be a long game for North St. Paul if they don't get their act going together quickly. Morgan from fast, 824 for the Raiders. Here comes the replay. Morgan gets a nice pass from Fast, shoots that one down low. And Stemmick's had a problem with that all night, but that's really not him. It looks like his defense is awfully lackadaisical out there. Nothing the young man can do. Somebody's got to get in front of these wide open players. So we get set for another face off. The 14th of the night. Roseville winning most of these. As you can tell, they've had possession most of the game. North St. Paul, nothing going on offense tonight, and that seems to be the story of the game. So Roseville has possession, looking to make this one 12. And they'll pass it back out, looking to attack the net. Big bunched up right now. Looks like they're going to get it out in front of the net. Shoots is going to go in, and that one is good. That's number 21, Carter Martin. Martin gets his third goal of the night. Folks, that's a 12-goal lead, and the clock will Sorry, be running now. Roseville, number 21, Carter Martin, unassisted. The 809 third quarter. Martin Alone, 809 for the Raiders. So 12 goal lead now should be a running clock here. Here's the replay here. Nice little pass out in front of the net. Shoots that one right in, and Stemmick's had problems all night blocking that one. And once this ball gets underway, the clock will not stop until. North St. Paul scores again. And here we go. It doesn't look like they're going to get that opportunity. You got to think that I don't have the stat in front of me, but Roseville's won 90% of the faceoffs tonight. Now we have another shot. This one whipped by Nelson. Nelson looks to get in on the action. Nelson with zero goals tonight. But six players with goals in this game for Roseville, only one for North St. Paul, and that's Feist. So Maz has it now. He's going to rifle this one in, and that one goes right past the net. But if he got it over just a little bit more, it didn't look like Stemming saw it at all. But nonetheless, Roseville's got possession, and they look to make this one a 13-score lead. Ball be shot in. That one's blocked by Stemming. Stemmick has it now. He'll take this one behind the net. Going to assess the field. Whip this one down the field. Looks like this one's going to go out of bounds. And that it does. It's going to be Roseville possession. Once again, Stemmick really nothing he could do. Trying to swap the field. Just hope one of his guys could grab the ball. But they can't. Didn't really give him a chance. So Roseville's got it. That's Moss. Moss will take this one out. He'll sprint downfield on the far side. More like just jog. Looks like Peterson will have it now. He gets it out to 29. That's Sam Kronig, the junior. 
Looks like we're gonna get some backups in for Roseville. Peterson's got it now. It out to Moss. Moss threw it for the net. Ball almost goes in on a pass. But Roosevelt picks it back up. Six minutes left in the third period. Third quarter, excuse me. And that one's good. Uncontested shot on the net from far out. That's Will Moss. He gets in on the action tonight. That's seven players who scored goals for the Roseville Raiders. They go up 14 to one. Roseville now outscoring their opponents in the first two games of the year, 30 to three. And we're not done with this one, folks. Nowhere near close. There is a running clock. You have Jake Fast with two goals, Will Moss with one goal, Carver Martin with three goals, Jared Ruskin with two, Bjorn Anderson with three, Carter Morgan with one, and Jake Hyland with one. And a lot of these goals are unassisted. A lot of players making their own moves or just not really being defended that greatly. So we'll have a face off here, and Roseville's gonna probably come up with it. Nope, North St. Paul does. And that one goes off the North St. Paul player, and Roseville's going to have possession. They get it out to the goalie. That's Peterson. Peterson has had a great time these last two games, only allowing one goal today, two goals in their last game. They're going to be cruising to 2-0 and to start the year. And Peterson's taking no guff, and he was going to take that one down the field. The player checked. This one's getting testy, and we got a penalty here. Too sure that's on. I'm gonna guess it's on the goalie. So 14 to one. Running clock here, ticking down. Looks like that penalty was on Roseville. So Feist is gipping down the field with the ball. Asking his players to do something. Only go on the night for North St. Paul. This is from Feist. He's going to whip this one in. That one goes five hole. Feist gets his second goal of the game. He's got six on the year. Scoring for the Bullers, number four, Nick Feist. Unassisted. Five on the year, excuse me. Feist just fired that one in and it right in the five hole uh, through Peterson's leg. Let's watch this replay right here. Look how big the shot. He acted like he was going to pass it. Goalie sets up, boop. Right past the thigh. Nice shot there from Feist. Still down by 12, so that clock's going to keep running. You got to wonder if Feist being a little injured probably took away all that scoring power. For North St. Paul, we're gonna get another face off. Beautiful shot down on the field. As I said earlier, it's a beautiful night here at North St. Paul Stadium. There's one bright spot tonight. It is the full moon if you're North St. Paul. So Roseville's gonna come away with the loose ball. Take it on the far side, that's Nelson. So we got a substitution here from North. It's number nine, player not even on the roster coming in. North St. Paul continues up their aggressiveness. We want to get these players who don't play much as much of their feet wet in game action as they can right now because they will be depth pieces later on in the year if they want to make a run. So they're just developing their younger players as they go. Colin Sundin is in. Sundin, not even a freshman. He's only in eighth grade. So he's a, a mini freshman. I don't even know what you call that. Just an eighth grader. 
nonetheless, this kid's got to be pretty good at hockey, if, or not hockey, lacrosse, if you're playing at this high of a level and you're only in eighth grade. So North St. Paul will have the ball. That's Jones. Jones, very quiet tonight. Ball's loose. One minute to go here in the third period. Third quarter, excuse me. Goalie Peterson is trying to see some action tonight. He gets decked. We get a technical foul here. That's sportsmanlike conduct. That one will go against Sullivan. A lot of people unhappy down here. Two minutes for a push. I don't think the refs got the right guy in that foul, but nonetheless. There's, a, there's an unruly parent on the field right now, and I think he got kicked out of the game. And uh, athletic director Jed Helwig will be escorting him off the premises. Jed Hulwick, but the father was escorted off the premises. You never like to see a parent get too much a part of the game when they have nothing to do with it. It's just unnecessary in youth sports. That was the end of the third quarter with the score. So that was the end of the third quarter. North Polars, too. Things getting testy all around for North St. Paul tonight. Parents getting kicked out of the games. Players getting, you know, big penalty calls on sportsmanlike conduct. Good on the refs for kicking that parent out. Another playoff update. Just has no the place playoffs. in high school sports, no matter what the call 72, is. Net 66 in the, third quarter. the ramifications for this game are so Thursday, small that there's nothing to get mad at. Stanley Cup playoffs, it's a final. Hurricanes two, so it's 14 to two here in the third period. And at the end of the first Folks, period. Folks, we got some other programs here at SEC we would like to talk to you about. And there's your I want to remind you to check out our other SEC update. shows, including North St. Paul Notes. Paul Anderson hosts this exciting program that showcases North St. Paul city staff, business leaders, and local residents of the North St. Paul community. Tune in to SEC Government, Comcast Channel 16, every month to find out what's happening in the city of North St. Paul. That's North St. Paul Notes, only on SEC TV. We got eight seconds left here, and that was North St. Paul notes. Eight seconds left until we kick off this final fourth quarter, and that will be a running clock for this whole quarter unless North St. Paul scores. Roosevelt doesn't. The refs have put the uh, play, put the coaches together. It looks like they're having a chat with them. I think they just want to get out of this game as smoothly as possible. Lots of unnecessary penalties and just, just – not the best lacrosse being played right now. Um, still want to say, if you're a parent and you get too much part of the game, just stop it. It's embarrassing. And folks, we want to remind you to check out some more SEC, SEC shows, including Inside Healthcare. Your host, Jody Rataka, brings you this monthly show, providing tips and up-to-date information on a variety of healthcare issues. Many of the show's topics often relate to women's health. 
show airs every Wednesday and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. on SEC Community, channel 19 or channel 801 in high definition. That's Inside Healthcare right here on SEC TV. And then we also want to remind you to check out Your Business Matters every month. Tom Snell on the White Bear Lake Chamber of Commerce bringing a guest who is either a business owner in White Bear Lake or has some connection to the White Bear business community. This 20-minute show provides good insight into what issues are affecting many of the local business owners. Your Business Matters airs every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Friday at 9.30 on SCC Community. Once again, that's channel 19 or 801 in high definition. That's Your Business Matters only on SEC TV. And here we go, fourth quarter starting off, and there's a shot from North St. Paul, and that'll stop the running clock. Nice rifle in there, I can't see what number that is. 17. That looks like Soberanis with his first goal of the night. The only player to score a goal that's not named Feist. Excuse me, that was Cody Simonis with the, with the goal. Sorry Not so Cody Simonis. Assisted by number 17, Jordan Bowler. The assist was by Soberanis, excuse me. Florida Soberanis, 11-51. Third quarter, fourth quarter. So here we go, North St. Paul looking to make this game 12. Trying to make it a running clock again and get out here as soon as possible. I'm not too sure what happened right there. That was Maz just threw his stick down and let the, I think the ball was stuck in it. Stick actually looks like it broke. And he just chucked it down. Really nothing you could do there. So unfortunately for him, pay a lot of money for those sticks and it's broke. So, Stemig will throw it down the field, and this one's caught, almost. They'll go back in play. North St. Paul looks like they're playing with a little feistiness here. They'll lose the ball, ball still out from the net. Roseville will pick it up. No, it's not Rose, it's still, still on the ground. And now Roseville picks it up. That's Jesse Nelson, the junior. Nelson, no goals on the night. You're looking to make something happen. Shot no good, way off, blocked. Nice smack away there from Lincoln Peterson, the freshman for Roseville. And Ro North St. Paul does pick it up. So Roseville looking to score a goal, get this clock running again. 9.43 left to go. Not too much you can say here now. Just kind of a yawner, blocked, uh, blocked shot there. A lot of young players in. Colin Sundin, the eighth grader, is in. Same with player that's not even on their roster right now. Getting some JV guys action, and there's a check, and the refs are gonna let them play. 
Ball's up in the air once again. And North St. Paul's got it, but they lose it. And Roseville's going to pick this one up. That's 14, Max Maz. Maz been all over the field tonight, the Maz brothers. And there's Sundin. Sundin. It's over to the freshman. They're going to whip it in from Maz, and Maz just gets that one to go away, but it's going to stay Roseville ball. 14 to 3, 847 left to go here in this one. So North St. Paul gets this one and they're gonna pass it back out. And this one's Hail Mary down the field and <laughs> North St. Paul players didn't even see it. We weren't even expecting it. So Roseville ends up with the ball. Smacked out now. They still, you know, North St. Paul still playing with a little bit of hustle from their younger players. Roseville got an easy shot on the net, and that's number 31. Not even on the roster, number 31. 36, excuse me. It's Magnus Gens, the sophomore. Scoring for Roseville, number 36, Magnus Gens. And here comes the replay. Nice pass. From Sundin, the eighth grader, wide open shot there. Goalie came way too far out. Stemmick had no shot to block that one. He put himself in, posi in bad position. Easy goal there from Gens, or Jens. So we're back on a running clock here, 7.30, almost 7.30 left to go. North St. Paul have it, still aggressive defense being played by Roseville. These young players getting their action that they've been waiting to see. And it's always nice when you're, you know, the older players get up on bad teams so that you can play, get your feet wet at the varsity level. So Roseville once again streaking down the field. That's number five, Garrett Marr, Marr, sophomore. This, uh, I think this Roseville team's gonna have some nice players here, even after the you know the seniors here graduate. But barring anything crazy happening, they will go two and zero to start the year. Playing great lacrosse tonight. You know, goalie Peterson pretty much could have took a nap back there the whole game because North St. Paul did not get the, the ball hardly ever in their offensive side of the zone. And if they did, they were quickly, quickly got the ball stolen away from them. Roseville looking to score again, up 15 to three here. Six minutes left to go. Six minutes, folks. The ball out to the far side. Now they get it behind the net here. Unable to come up with it, and this one's Almost going to go out of bounds. Ball eeks out. Roseville picks it back up. That's 29. Sam Kronig. Kronig. Gets it out to Jens. He looks to get his second goal of the night, but he missed. And North St. Paul's going to probably airmail this one down the field. This one's going to go out of bounds on the pass. I don't know 
whose ball it's going to be. I think it's going to be North St. Paul. Nope, it's going to be Roseville ball. Both players were confused in the end. Roseville ends up with it. We'll press it down the field. Number 23, not listed on the roster, is in for Roseville. But nonetheless, player makes a move and he throws this one in. That's Chris Martell, the senior, getting his first goal of the night. Sorry for Roseville, number four, Chris Martell. Unassisted. Nine 36, players with goals tonight for Roseville. 420 left to go. Let's take a look at this replay. Martell runs down the field and he just rifles this one in there. Nothing you could do there if you're Stemic. And folks, we want to talk to you about our upcoming broadcast on April 22nd. We do. CTV will be providing us of a softball game of Roseville versus White Bear Lake. And then on the 25th, we'll be covering girls lacrosse. That's White Bear Lake versus Columbia Heights. The 29th, we got boys lacrosse, Matamidi versus Henry Sibley. Matamidi always good at hockey, so you'll, er, lacrosse, so you'll definitely want to check that game out, as well as all the rest of the programming that we provide here on SEC TV. So we're at three and a half minutes left to go in this one. Running clock, 16 to three, Roseville over the Polars at North St. Paul Stadium. Folks, if you've just tuned in, we have nine players with goals for this Roseville Raider team, making up all 16 of their goals. Everybody getting in on the action. Eighth graders playing tonight. Fantastic game if you're head coach for Roseville, Seth King, not so great if you're North coach, Jake Carter. If you're keeping track at home over the first two games, Roseville is outscoring their opponents 32 to five. Averaging 16 goals per game scored so far this year. And they might up that number just a little bit to close out the game. That's Gens once again and he gets a shot and that one's good. Gens gets his second goal of the night. Second one in the last three minutes. This young man comes in and does nothing but score. And now we're getting some more players in. Number 50, not even on the roster, number 27. I don't know who that is either. Roseville's getting everybody a little taste tonight. Got some players doing the Ezekiel Elliott feed me uh, down on the sidelines for Roseville. Here's the replay. And I don't know what Stemming was doing there, but I think he's kind of just, I think he was blocked by his defender from viewing where that ball was. 17 to three, one minute, 55 seconds left to go. This one can't end soon enough for North St. Paul. And we got a whistle. A little false start on that, on that uh, face off. And we got a pass out here to the far side. North St. Paul still playing, some of their players still playing with their hearts out, knowing that playing time is on the line. And Joey Heipel, the freshman, is in at goalie. <laughs> Didn't really throw that one greatly, and he looked to pass this one out. He's still taking it. He just threw down his man, his defender. Things are getting hyped in the stands here. People are, North St. Paul fans are still getting crazy with a minute left to go here. Maybe it's North St. Paul, not exactly sure. Uh, nonetheless, Roseville cruises in this one, up 17 to three, 45 seconds left. And that one smacked away. North St. Paul's gonna pick it up. That's Soberanis, Soberanis loses the ball here. And that's picked up by Braley, big old Mark Braley, who uses that strength to just bomb it down the field. This one's gonna go out of bounds. I think it's gonna be Roseville ball, it doesn't matter. By the time they get this ball in, it's gonna be almost game over, as we have 15 seconds left. Yep, and that 
will just about end it. Ball's going to go away. Nobody's even hustling towards it. And there's one second. Clock strike zero. Folks, that's your ball game. Boys lacrosse, Roseville Raiders defeat the North St. Paul Polars 17 to three. Roseville goes 2 and 0, North St. Paul goes 1 and 1. Thank you for your attendance to tonight's game. Roseville steals one here in, in North St. Paul and that'll just about wrap it up here at SEC Sports. For everyone here at SEC Sports, good night.